So this next installment here is really just about why PVC bending is the best for what we're trying to do here. And I'd like to take more time. I'm not actually going to demonstrate any bends on this episode, but I am going to show some interesting things that we have been in the past. I just want to get into the system a little bit more and talk about what we've got and why it's so cool. Now every episode so far I've been using this 9 foot bender right here, which is my favorite. Honestly, this when I'm doing bends in the shop, this is the tool that I use. I like a 9 footer because even if you're bending 2 feet of pipe, 3 feet of pipe, you've got plenty of room. You can be sure that your entire pipe is on the hot zone if that's what you're trying to heat. And at the same time, if you just want to bend the very end of the pipe, you can just slip a little ways onto the end, get the part that you want hot, hot, and leave the rest completely straight like it was before. Now we also make them in a six foot length. This one is not turned on, there's no way I'd do that, but uh, this one's cool. The six foot length allows for six feet of bent pipe, six feet of flexible material, which is still more, you know, try that with the heat gun and tell me how it goes for you, because I bet it's, uh, and, uh, we go down as low as three feet, and this is the same thing, like you show me, use an infrared box to easily heat up three feet of pipe, or show me with a heat gun, or show me with a torch, and I know some of them, it can be done, but man, it is such a pain in the butt, with this thing right here, drop it on, wait for it, pull it back off, and you're ready to boogie, you know, that's a whole lot better than sitting there fiddling with your heat gun, and going back and forth, moving it all around, or I've seen guys with those infrared boxes that are very expensive, by the way, and they're sitting there and they're moving the pipe back and forth and they're rolling it around, and it's ridiculous. It's a pain in the butt. It's a process that is not necessary. You know, I'm not trying to, well, I am trying actually to pump this up and say, hey, this is the best way to bend PVC. And here in the shop, I've had a chance to experiment with the other methods, just so that way when I say this, I'm feeling this and I'm not just like, well, because I'm paid by the company, this is the best thing in the world. It's like, no, if you want, try them out, and you'll see that, honestly, this is the way to go. And just to get a little bit further into that, say, okay, now, what can you do with a three-foot bender that you can't do easily with another setup? This is a perfect circle, or it's damn close to a perfect circle. This is as good as you're going to get, really. A true perfect circle is mathematically impossible because you get down to the atomic level and there's going to be some imperfections in there somewhere. So this was done on a three foot bender and you can see, hey, that's cool. There's a, quite a few possibilities and some of them were in non-disclosure agreements so I can't actually tell you what the possibilities are. But needless to say, very, very cool what's going on with this stuff here. And when you get to a six foot, something that you could do with a six foot that you couldn't do with uh, one of those other methods is something like this, and we've done a lot more intricate styles. We've done scroll pieces that are a lot like old wrought iron work, and we've made a really, really cool plant trellis. And using not this design, something a little bit more complicated, I just don't have any pieces of it laying around right now. I might even demonstrate one of those for you in a little while. But you can see, you know, that's six feet of pipe right there. This one might actually even be seven or eight feet. But again, this is something try this with the heat gun, you know, show it to me, try this with an infrared box, show it to me, and chances are it's going to be a pain, you know, heating six whole feet of pipe, that's just a ridiculous thing to do, it's very hard. Now, this is another example in that range, this was actually done on a three footer as well, I'm not sure what it is, my boss comes up with some really weird things sometimes, but I just want to show it off because it's curvy, and it's completely curvy, and there's not one section of straight pipe left. You know, this is another thing. Do that with a heat gun. Show it to me. It's really hard. Do that with, you know, one of those silly cold bending things that they've got out there. No way. It just can't be done. I mean, that's ridiculous. And then, when you get up to the nine footer, you know, this is our ridiculous extreme right here. But take a look at that. That's two inch schedule 40 PVC pipe and the entire thing is bent. You know, this is something it's like, do that with a heat gun. Show it to me. Do that with a cold band. Show it to me. And it's going to be ridiculous. If it's not impossible, you're at least going to have a very hard time. And with this, slide the pipe on the bender. Wait a few minutes. Rotate it as you go. 
and then slip that thing off and it'll do whatever you ask it to do within its limitations. So I did just gotta say, you know, this is the way to go. And it's not just, uh, yes, these guys signed my paycheck. That's no joke, but I work for them because I want to, because I like what they're doing. Because say, for me, I'm a gardener and I like to grow my own food. So as soon as I started actually working with the guy, I can sit there and say, wow, I can build a greenhouse that waters itself. Wow, I can make hydroponic systems that are continuous loops. So instead of it being like a series of individual wells that are all being flooded and drained in a hydroponic system with curves, you can make one really long run going back and forth all the way down the line and save on flood drains, save on pipes, save on fittings and all that. It's really cool stuff. So it's to say I'm not just pumping it because they're telling me to, that's a part of it, but honestly I'm pumping it because it's worth it. If I didn't like it, I'd have gone somewhere else by now. This is a very, very cool system. And there's not much else I can say here. You know, you got nine feet, you got six, you got three. By now, hopefully, you've seen the sleeving up process. In the future, we'll bring out some of the B-size models and show you the advantages to that, show you how much faster it goes. And something really worth looking into, whether you've got an idea that you're working on and you're trying to settle down on a material that you want to use, or whether you already building something and you're realizing that either your material costs are messing with you or that you just want to try something different that one of those one or more of the properties of the materials you're working with don't work EDC is cool stuff it, it really is worth looking into for a lot of different things and then also it's like if you're a tradesman who is working with this pipe already if you're a plumber and you're doing you're trying to get a pipe around a weird corner or you know there's one stud that you can't cut and you need to get around it things like that here it is and how many times in a plumbing application you're like oh man i wish i had a fitting that would do this well now you don't have to worry about that you just make the pipe do it and it's the same in conduit, you know, I'm working in a building here that's got exposed conduits all over the place and some of the offsets that they had to do and some of the crude and primitive tools that they were using to do this, they could have done faster, easier, and with way better finishes using this system. So it is super, super awesome. And that's that for this episode.